It's dangerous out here, man. You don't want to be out here in, it, in, in, in this part right here uh, after that sun goes down. Have fun with the Ghetto Olympics. Come down to Arizona, everybody. I'm not a rapist. I never raped anybody as an adult. Oh, I, remember, I don't know oh, where to begin. We are North Americans. I hate the feeling when you're looking at me that way. Cause we're not I'm not sure God exists, you know? Uh, people say, well, if God was so good, then why all the bad shit? No, that's not exactly how it goes, in my opinion. It's the other one that does that. And that's what this is out here. It's the devil's playground, and it's one big compromised situation. If you're not strong enough to suffice, then you will perish out here. There's no doubt. A near 450% increase in people camped out on the streets in this one concentrated area. Nearly 1,100 unsheltered people. I've been here 10 years, so I've seen everything from when it was hardly past that block to coming all the way onto the property on this side. We'll call it Thunderdome. It used to be called the zone, now they call it the danger zone. About mm, 7 30, 8 o'clock in the morning, 20 gunshots going off, which meant there were two different guns going at each other. Don't know what we're going to come across in the morning. Someone sleeping, someone passed out, uh, tents, urination, defecation, uh, violence. So it's been very, very difficult. Think what it takes for somebody to be walking down the street, drop their pants to their ankles, and just start shitting at the bus station over here. It's more of a Port of John than a bus station. They found another lady in, like in the bush across the street with the needle in her arm, laid out, she had died. Walked out my front door and had a man laying there dead. I've seen four people go out in body bags. How many people see that once in their neighborhood? That was just one week. There's been four murders down there in the last two and a half weeks in, uh, in just that area. Not uh, surrounding communities or neighborhoods. There's always murders, there's always stuff going on, they're always trying to kill people. And then the dumpster fire where they threw the dude in the dumpster and lit him on fire it was a block away. Threw him, threw him in the dumpster and lit him up. I refused to go down there, especially after that kid got burned in that garbage can the other day. We're living in the Mount Zero building or something. I right, come back fresh. What we going do? Two days ago? Yeah, two days ago. Yeah, I saw something on the news about that. Police have arrested two suspects after a burned body is found inside of a dumpster near downtown Phoenix in the homeless encampment called The Zone. They say that he was placed in trash bags, loaded into a grocery cart, and then thrown into the dumpster. Records show that the man was alive before a third person set fire to the trash in the dumpster. Can you say, uh, uh, introduce yourself again? I'm the Night Rider. Night Industries 2000. Kid, I'm a bus driver and a life. I'm a paramedic and a police officer. I even work on cars because I'm a Marine, because I'm a chef. I'm a DJ, but you know what? I'm a crossing guard. Because I'm a crossing guard, I direct traffic at night. I'm a chef, I'm Italian. I don't watch the airplanes at night. That's Sky Harbor. They call me the Italian side because I'm a school teacher and a Bible school teacher. I sing in a church. Place in this world, my place in this world. Turn on the reason. Too old. 
Jeep almost blew up in back of the alley two days ago. Blew up? They were, I guess they were playing with cherry bombs or some kind of fucking firework in the back. I was in the general vicinity. I heard the screams and I, I saw the hand. Hey, where exactly did it happen? Show me real quick. Right I want to get a video of it. I mean, well, it happened over there, but yeah. she ran right here. Where that green bottle is, that's where we helped her. And tied her, right her, her arm, but they covered up with the dirt so you can't see the blood anymore. No if you put a bunch of people in the same area and nobody has money, it's going to it's going to end up being a lot of crime. Whether it be drug dealing, assault, sexual sexual crime, it's just gonna be a lot of crime, you know what I mean? There was one time in my life I got comfortable killing people. Didn't bother me at all. And then one day I decided I didn't want to kill them. So I'll be tired. Me and my now husband, Tony, uh, robbed this guy who would come down to the zone to buy drugs and go to a hotel and get high. The blue wear a bruise G. And blues is fentanyl with the... Uh... How many people around here are into that? Everybody. The majority. <laughs> Everybody. There's some people that are smoking like 100 or 200 of those a day. I use it for my pain, really. Every time I'm out, people are using drugs, you know, in front of me. Sometimes people don't know me. They'll, I may have told you this earlier, they'll put them out of sight real quick. Someone else will say, oh, oh that's Chaplain with? Mark, he's cool. What name do you want to use? First name, street name, real name. Everybody out here knows who I am. How does everybody know you? What's kind of your, your reputation? We've earned our stripes. They help, so to speak. No, I have. Well, I have. Uh, I help people as much as I, I can. Actually, I know yeah, Mama both Lori them. around. A lot of people know me as Mama Lori or Lori. Because I help I'm people as I can. We've only had her for a few months. Um, she's a rescue. Oh, okay. Actually, somebody, she she um, adopted you, didn't she? Pinata. A pinata? What? We've been together 15 years. Going on 16 this going on, year. Yeah, we're going on 16 this year. Being married and being out here, it hasn't changed us. Really? Yeah, it hasn't changed the love I have for him at all. And Maybe mine for her either. I think it's made it stronger. <laughs> she killed me a soda. <laughs> How did it make it stronger, you think? Because you have to bond, you bond more. Yeah. You have to be strong in order to survive out here. Because these streets, if you're not a strong-minded person, it's going to eat you alive. Somebody just got something. What do you guys do with the dead bodies? What do they do with the dead bodies? They co-tag them with a number and they carry on with their dinner. I Narcan 37 people last year. 37 people, to which I've lost three of them. What if, are if, they? If you don't think that gives you uh, COPD or gives you some sort of ill-mannered uh, thought process, it surely do. It's not normal. It's not normal at all in the least. Searching for a reason I'm in the chaos dimension Reasons eclipsed by tension Dude, I have watched this kid get straight shot in his head half a job on 9th and Taylor. What's stopping you from going to the rehab center like today? Hey, you guys, you guys want in on this video? A little bit of uh, NASCAR pimp stuff. Hey, how does it feel to how does it feel to interview broken light bulbs? Broken uh, light bulbs. <laughs> yeah, too fast they are. You know that, right? Why do you call them that? Yeah, no broken shit. light bulb does not have a face. All right. Ah, that's a good one. Hey, that's see what, that? Hey, that's why they need a camera. Right? Okay. Right. You see that shit? Broken light bulbs. See that shit? You see that? Yeah. That's what they like. Yeah, you can't fix it. You can't fix it, right? No more, huh? Fix me. Can't fix you? Are you sure we can fix you? All right, let's go to rehab right now. Ah, see that? See that? See that? I told him rehab, he said no. Get, see this guy right here? Still, he's not gonna go away. That guy's not gonna go away. There's, you see him right there? That guy right there is not gonna go away. I mean, they don't have 
they lost it already. What are we gonna do for them? And people say homeless, homeless issue, this. It's not fucking homeless. It's mental health issue. It's not homeless. It's not had to do shit with homeless. It's not. Because those programs, homeless programs, what do they do? Politicians, they pocket the fucking money. They don't help. They don't give the money. But they yeah. said in June or July that they were going to put us in like in hotels or... Mm -hmm. Temporarily. Or temporarily or shelters. Until they find permanent they housing find for permanent folks. Housing. But I must tell you, they said that before. When they, they never it. Our leaders tend not to look at the big picture of what it is that got you there and what we can do to get you out of there. They need an overhaul in the system. There's money there. There, there is absolutely money there, but there's not the people to do it. Over the past two years, the city of Phoenix has received nearly $100 million in COVID relief money from the federal government to help with homelessness and the housing crisis. But as the I-Team's Erica Stapleton found out, most of that money hasn't been touched. Why can't the city make significant, significant progress? We want to clean up the area around the Human Service Campus and we have been planning for a long time. S so you agree with the spirit of the ruling, and that's correct. The city has had a strategies for homelessness plan in the works for three years. The plan said there was a, quote, sense of urgency. That was a year ago. They all call me mom, and I treat them like one. Yes, I yell sir. at them, I yell at them, you're all family. You know, so that's how I treat everyone, and, and like a mom. Almost everyone out here, they, they have some kind of trauma, you know, childhood or, or some kind of trauma in their life, and then they experience so much more out here. A friend of mine, she just ended up getting raped. You turn around, there's that same dude, and he started chasing after me, and that, that's that's pretty scary. There's a lot of uh, stories of women that are raped. A lot of people trying to get other people to rape, um, like trying to get people to go and rape them when they were tied up. That's why that guy tried to rape me in the bathroom. Many times, you know, women would wake up being raped because that happened to me. I had fi finally fallen asleep, had probably been up for a week seven days or so and eventually fell into what they call a cocaine coma and I woke up and a guy was on top of me. I don't know too many women who've ever been out here homeless that have not been attacked. 17 out of 20 women are probably sexually assaulted or uh, raped or used for sex trafficking purposes. Arizona ranked 13th in the country with 651 reports of human trafficking tips, 337 victims. Commercial sexual exploitation generates millions of dollars in illegal profits every single year in this country alone. My kids were, they were sexually trafficked for a long time. I think the stat is one in three or one in four women uh, that are homeless are uh, a victim of human trafficking. I do know of uh, younger girls who had no street knowledge or wisdom, who were taken to a hotel room, fed heroin to where they were dependent upon it. And at that point, they'll do anything that you ask them to do to get their next fix. I want the runs of the bunch, the you that you can't keep up. I want a baby inside, a belly white as your eyes. Want to fit two, three, four, five. Inside my baby don't hide, my pink juicy I didn't know where to go, what to do. I knew I was pregnant, so I knew I had to keep, you know, my daughter safe. There was one point where I wanted to give up. Um, a friend, I was staying with a friend for a couple days, and then I guess, you know, that wasn't working out. So when I went and grabbed my stuff, I walked over Power Road in the US 60. 
and I'm, I just stopped on the overpass and I thought about it, just jumping off, just being done. And walking to each side and thinking, do I want to see it coming? Do I want them to see it coming? You know, how can, you know, but, um, what, I, what kept you going? My daughter. When I left my youngest daughter's father, um, I was, when everything started coming to a head, I was about six weeks pregnant and I walked in on him smoking meth on my bed with another woman. That was when I realized that something had to give, something had to change because I was going to end up just like him and I didn't want that for my daughter. Mommy, can we walk around? Not right now, please. We'll go for a walk around in just a little bit, okay? No, a walk. So I was actually sleeping on my sister's couch while I was pregnant with her. I was on Facebook looking for, you know, hey, can I stay with somebody? Can I rent a room from somebody? And somebody was on there on Facebook and said, hey, you know, this place helped out my sister. You should call them. So I called them for like three weeks straight trying to get an intake. And then after I finally got in touch with them, it took like two weeks and I was in one of their houses. Reach out. Um, reach out to your friends, reach out to your family, reach out to the people that love you because no matter what the, that pe person is saying, that person that is hurting you, they still love you. Your family and your friends still love you. Reach out to them and ask for help. I need a minute. <laughs> Don't take your time. I still haven't even talked to my sister about it, told her it yet. Because I, I don't even know how to tell her because it's going to break her heart, you know. But I was in so much pain all night, last night. I mean, I, I hardly sleep anymore, you know what I mean? I, I just, at night time I'm in, in just physical pain and I, just, I end up having to stay up just to, to try to so that I can make it through the night, you know. And it all happened so fast. I mean, I never thought I just turned 61 too, you know, and then, and I mean, within like four weeks, five weeks, all this happened. And then when the doctors came in and they gave me a piece of paper and they told me how much time they expect and that, and then they told me, uh, that I could expect, you know, if my feet started turning black and blue, that I'd have to have my feet amputated and stuff. And I, I just was, it just knocked me out. I, I didn't even know what to even, even say or think, you know, about it all, you know? I mean, I just could catch my breath, you know? I was just unbelievable. Surprising who you find out who your friends really are when you're, until you get in this position, you know what I mean? Because when I was up in the hospital, they ripped all my, my tools. They started pulling the wires off my truck. The government is walking away from a lot of people. You know, just, just they just don't care about the, the homeless anymore, you know? See, the cement has never meant so much. My heart head cools the stone cold touch. I look to settle my seed with the dust Brain, leave me be Can't you see that these eyes are shut? My concrete bed beckons And can you hear me? See, life isn't fair The least steps there To hold both hands And stroll through lands And as it stands The empty vessel of a man can be moved My heart head cools to stone cold touch I look to settle my seat with the dust Brain leave me be, can't you see that these eyes are shut? We were not able to maintain the kind of per unit growth in housing that we needed to. I'm the executive director with Shelters to Shutters Greater Phoenix that is dedicated to building uh, employment and housing solutions as well as to help individuals start careers in the multi-housing and apartment industry. So I signed up for Shelters to Shutters back in, I'd say probably September. They had me do some online learning as far as 
um, what to expect in the property management spectrum. Now I should be ex receiving my offer letter Monday or Tuesday for an actual leasing consultant position. The program that worked for me was Shelters to Shutters. You know, they help with the training and stuff. Used to uh, volunteer at St. Vincent de Paul. I work here as the program supervisor at St. Vincent de Paul. I, I spent most of my life on drugs. You know, I went to prison and prison was the best thing that ever happened to me. And what do you think, because Arizona has the fastest growing homeless population, what do you see as the main reason that's causing people to become homeless? Expensive rent. People getting kicked out of places because um, they want to raise the rent. Phoenix has the highest inflation rate of any major city in the country. Housing prices are up 17% from the previous year. And you can see the fallout of that just right behind me here. A new report shows Arizonans are having a harder time keeping roofs over their heads. It is because of rising rents. You know, it's a combination of things. More people moving to Arizona, rising real estate prices, and a severe shortage of affordable housing. I'm so girlfriend's mom lives right there in the tent. I used to live with her two years ago in Scottsdale in a nice ass apartment. But due to her financial situations, no drugs involved. She couldn't afford her rent no more. She lost her job, couldn't afford her rent. Now she sleeps in her car. Everything's so high, you know, it's hard to survive. My mom started Billy's Way Home after my brother Billy passed away. But really it started um, knowing what a great person my brother was. And after he passed away as a result of being homeless, um, he had an injury that was infected, and that's common out here. A lot of people um, have injuries that are life-threatening. So Billy was my stepson, and that's why this began. began. Billy lived out here and struggled with addiction and homelessness for about seven or eight years. You'd think, you know, that the drugs is what kills them. The lifestyle doesn't help, but it's a lot of them, it's an infection in the leg or somewhere. You know, they can't keep it clean. Red, one of our guys here, he's got nine fingers now. We watched as the one progressively got worse until they, he had to have it cut off. His stepmom comes up here to Midway Park and puts on a dinner for us homeless. The project that she does, it's called Billy's Way Home. Yeah, she had started Billy's Way Home. We are all so grateful for mom. Yeah. She has she, helped all of us makes in so big, many ways. They make a big dinner for us. It comes out of their pocket. They don't get any help from the state. And there's the me that's got her makeup done now. Ah, oh, beautiful. Hey, okay, real quick, give me my jacket. I definitely gotta have my jacket because it's gonna be cold. <laughs> okay, let me get, let me stock up these sodas. Been one thing after another. For about five years, I've been on housing. Every time I get somewhere with it, someone steals my phone or my thing, or I have to start all over again. And it's getting me nowhere. It's amazing how far a phone goes these days too. My job, I give away free phones and tablets to the community. Anybody has access medical insurance or food stamps, they get approved and I give them a free phone. The only help that they're giving them is a place to take a shower and you know, and a cop for the night and a place to eat. That's not the help that they need. They need access to the internet so they can find resources to find jobs. I just think that the city of Phoenix should be held more accountable to the homeless population as well as the drug pop, the drug addiction. They are giving us, you know, free housing. That's a plus, you know, but it take a while, maybe a year. That's what's taking so long. That's what, that's the problem, it's taking so long. They gotta sp speed it up. That's the way to clear this stuff up. You know what I'm saying? Speed the process up. You know, instead of a year, let it be six months. Or... The city of Phoenix cleared out the zone. However, now that the court order has been completed, the overall issue of homelessness remains. Here's a side-by-side -side view of the zone, the Phoenix homeless encampment. In May, upwards of a thousand people lived on the streets, but now the city has cleared it out. And telling a jurisdiction 
eliminate the public nuisance isn't solu a solution to how did people become homeless. It's a wiping away, it's an erasing of a circumstance that's happened to people, and it's not identifying a solution. It really just said, go through this area, tell people they can't be here. Is that the biggest problem, affordable housing and having roofs uh, in general? So for us, it's, it's really a three-pronged approach. How do we help more people stay housed? How do we have enough services for people who lose their housing? And how do we have enough housing? Everybody wanted to talk about homelessness. And so there is this feeling inside like, okay, are we, are we back to where we were five years ago that people don't see homelessness, so they're not going to want to talk about it. And I don't want a thousand people living outside to have to get people to talk about it. Last week, there were still 109 people living on the streets outside of their facility. What do you think are the right questions people should be asking? What are the right questions? Every question is the right question. What they should be wondering is if we're, if we're okay, if we have a place to stay, if we have any money for food in our pocket, if we're, uh, if we're clothed, if we're warm, if we're cold. Those are the right questions. Are we hungry? Do we need help getting places? Not are you high? Uh, where can you get this for me? Where can you get that for me? What can you do for me? What have you done for me lately? That's just bullshit. You're gonna take the, 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 the people that have the least and ask the most out of them. Boy, is that fair. Negligence shows all. When you simply don't give a fuck, you show that immediately by doing, well, nothing. How do you think make people make that detachment in their brain? How do you think they live in this world knowing that there's people like you? on the street right now. Living in like the this. right situation, they uh, uh, show it to the proper people at the proper times for the proper wording for their benefit and their benefit only. But as soon as it doesn't benefit them, they give no fuck. They don't care about nothing. And they simply leave it alone. They surely don't donate to the cause of. What do you want, like on your, if somebody was to know? My tombstone, pepperoni, yeah. and sausage. <laughs> Why did this happen? And the voice said to me, because there are lessons you need to learn. Oh man, yes. And the only way you're going to learn it is to follow this path that I have laid out for you. And that path was homelessness. And I spent three years homeless. And I, I sort of asked, well, wait a minute, why? why? I, I haven't harmed anybody. <laughs> I haven't done anything wrong. The answer came back, but you never helped anybody either. <laughs> The best way to help the homeless people, I'm telling you, is to get with the homeless people and find out what works for them. Understand them. Don't come in as like, oh, well, we know how to fix you. Like, cause how's that working out for you? It's not. Why do you hurt the one who treats you so good? And why do we only act the way others think we should? Why do we play the game? That lovers play How do we say what we mean And mean what we say But oh, why don't we talk it through Tell it the way you feel Take off our plastic man Screech out for love so real Why don't we talk the truth, baby Tell me the 